This is the third generation store. That tree's been here since 1930. It still makes pears, and the guys go climb up the tree and eat the pears in the fall. At one point, the branches were so heavy they would just break off. This is my grandfather's office. I came here, I jumped on his lap, I'd sit here, go over egg prices. <laughs> it's always been home. You know, I'm gonna spend more time here than I spend at my house. But it's just comfortable and it's home and I love it and I just love it. What the retail store is now, when it was a farm, was the hatchery and was strictly wholesale chickens. And where he cleaned and dressed the turkeys. He was one of the first to hang the turkeys upside down. It was on 10 acres. These were garages. Where the hospital stands now is where he had a hatchery and he kept his horses. The house over here was, um, my grandfather lived in it, uh, my parents lived in it. Darwin Bruce, who was my grandfather's first manager, and his wife, Pat, lived in the house as well. And hindsight now, you think of, holy cow, what a genius he was. Even to set back so far in 1930, nobody set their business back that far. They were right on the street. My grandfather only sold wholesale chickens. In the 40s, he decided to sell retail turkeys. He was told that there's no way you could do that. It'll never happen. He said he's gonna do it anyway. He put a four by eight piece of plywood out front and said, buy your turkeys here. That was the beginning of his poultry empire. And then he started cooking chickens, and then started cooking turkeys, and then he started getting into the southern fried chicken, and the rotisserie chicken, and the ribs. Then he started a big catering business. In 1943, Poppy was the first to eviscerate a turkey. He called it oven ready. Everyone else sold their turkeys New York dressed, which was plucked only with their head and feet attached. He had his own breed. He kept breeding white feathers with dark feathers, Beltsvilles they were called, and he kept cross-breeding them. So he got to the type of turkey that he wanted. And the way he cooked it also, breast down, which more people do now, but he was certainly one of the innovators or started that. This over here used to be where the zoo was. It was a U-shape here and a big pen in the middle. We had raccoons, we had guinea hens, we had peacock, silkies. We had all kinds of animals here. We always had turkeys, but we used to have a big pig there. And they were always pets. They were never animals to be killed. In the back, when you would walk, there was chickens and ducks and geese that ran wild. So when you walk back there, they'd follow you wherever, you know, you could just play with any duck anywhere you want. The first generation building, just a, a processing plant. 
my office is the original retail store. And they bought the turkeys next door, or they brought them, they brought them here, and this is where the, my grandfather had a little cigar box, and that was what he kept his money in. It wasn't, you know, there was no registers back then. That my grandmother got a saw horse and put like a piece of wood there and an oil cloth on top, and that was their table, and that's what they did. And that was the original office, so you wouldn't have an office, you just worked, it was, you know, you just right. were, in the, were in the store. I think of my grandfather, every time I see his desk, I think of my grandfather, I think of sitting on his lap. He was an avid hunter and fisherman. He caught a 696 pound tuna. He actually had him mounted on the wall. But he had that here. And uh, this is exactly how his desk was. He had a big giant seat though. But this is his desk and this is the desk I'm moving. This is gonna be my desk in the office. This is my dad's office. And this is my dad's desk. And that is my dad's chair. And this, this I gave to my dad in kindergarten, as you can see. And this is the famous Station 7. Station 7 has always been the hub. We organize deliveries, we take inventory, schedules are made, everything happens at Station 7. Our manager, Frank Staccio, had an office, but you would always find him at Station 7. These are where the turkeys were when they, we packaged them here. This was a, a machine that sucked that beer. This ceiling was raised to put where the ovens are now. So it's exactly the same oven. Somewhere in the 70s, we built what we call the kingdom. So those are the A pens, and then this is the Spice pen, and then we have Walter's pen. That first pen, you, we used to call the museum, and it had a little bit of everything in it. The Kingdom is where we did all of our turkey productions for Thanksgiving, and then the Spice pen is where we mixed all the spices that we use you know, to this day, and then there's Walter's pen where everything was fixed. Uh, you know, Walter fixed everything. Walter made everything, he fixed everything, and he was the smartest man I've ever known and still will ever know. This all was goats. There were roosters of all kinds, and here was a, a hen house. Saturday mornings when we used to work, I used to go out and pick my eggs. So it was goose eggs and um, speckled eggs and, and duck eggs. And um, my mom used to make breakfast. So then you worked all day. <laughs>
mean, there's close to, I think it's 1,200 feast orders get uh, picked up during the day, and that doesn't include anything inside the store. been here for 77 years so people that grew up here that have been coming here for so long they they always come back people coming from Massachusetts Virginia grew up on Long Island and every year they come back up and they they pick up their feast from Zorns <laughs> Merrill is a good friend but I still come in here as much as I can <laughs> the food is just fantastic I grew up across the street and ever since I was young my mother would bring us all to Zorn's here to come to get uh, their fried chicken of course was, is famous uh, but also I always look forward to uh, coming here and seeing the animals that they had on the side the, the turkeys and the, the goats and chickens and everything it was a, it was an event to come here um, and it was always a, it was like being part of the family you came in and they treated you very well the food was awesome, it was again just, uh, just as good as home cooked if not better. Of course as I got older and moved uh, pretty close, my wife and I have come here and brought home meals for the family all the time too, so it's a tradition that keeps continuing. I've been coming here for 30 years and as a kid we used to come here and get stuff and my, my parents would bring us in there, my brother and I, and look at the turkeys. and. We moved out east a little bit, not that far, Smithtown, Smith St. James area. And um, but we still come here to get our, our Thanksgivings. This goes back to my grandparents. 